Hello everyone, I'm Adam with HKN and today we're going to be going over mesh analysis and super meshes. We're going to do a quick mesh analysis review before we go into super meshes so you completely understand it. So this right over here is a normal circuit we can just perform mesh analysis on. Now if you remember how to do mesh analysis, we know that we have to make our meshes which are Kirchhoff's voltage law loops around the closed loop of wire in this circuit. So there's three of those in this circuit. We're going to name the first one I1, second one I2, third one I3. Now if we remember Kirchhoff's voltage law, we understand that the voltages, if added correctly, around this loop, any closed loop, should equal to zero. And that's how we can do mesh analysis. So let's do this one. First, we have I1. So let's go around this and try to figure out what the equation for this loop is. So I1, first it goes through this 5 ohm resistor. So we're going to try to find the voltage of that. That's going to be equivalent to I1 times 5 ohms. Because if we remember, V equals IR. And oh yeah, remember that one. So we got I1 times 5 volts. And then we come to this voltage source, this constant voltage source, and that's going to be 20 volts. So we're going into the negative side of that, so we're going to subtract 20 volts. If we were coming into the positive side, we would add it. Negative side, subtract it. So we got negative 20 volts right over there. And now we're going to come to this 3 ohm resistor. Now this 3 ohm resistor is interesting because this 3 ohm resistor is shared with this loop. So we have to take that into account. So I1 is going this way through that resistor. I2 is going this way. So if this is a positive current this way, this is going to be a negative current this way. So what we're going to do to find the voltage of this, because we don't exactly know what this current is. We don't know what that current is. We don't know the current through here. But we know they're related. So we know that I1 minus I2 is going to be the current through that resistor. Then we're going to multiply it by the 3 ohm resistor. And we're going to continue through the loop. Then we come to this 1 ohm resistor plus I. We're going to do the same thing we just did. I1 going through this side. I3 going through that side. So we're going to subtract I3 because they're going in opposite directions. We're going to multiply it by the 1. And that whole entire thing, we come back to the end here. We come back to 5 so we don't have to do any more. But that entire thing is going to be equal to 0. Because Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltages added together around in this loop equal to zero. So we're going to do the next loop now. We're going to do I2 times 6 ohms plus I2 minus I3, just like we did in that previous problem, multiplied by the 2 ohms. Because I2 I is going this way, I3 is going this way, going opposite directions. But we know that one minus the other has to equal the current going through this resistor, because there's only one current going through this resistor. We're going to continue around that loop. We're going to come to this one, I2 minus I1. And if you notice, this right here multiplied by the 3 ohms. This is going to be completely opposite this, because now it's going in the opposite direction. So we know that these are related. And that makes it so that we know that these are going to be equal. So we come to the end of that. That's the three terms we need. That's equal to 0. Now we're going to go to I3, this loop right over here, going all the way around this. We're going to add 40. Why are we going to add 40? Because we have a 40 volt source right here. And that's plus 40. We're going into the positive side. Remember if I said we're going into the positive side, we're going to add, like in this problem, this mesh, we're going over this way. It's going in the positive side. We add it. This side right over here, we're going in the negative side. So we subtract it. So we're going to add that 40 volts right over here. Go to this 4 ohm resistor plus I3 times 4 ohms. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to come to this one, which is, oh my gosh, right in the middle here. We're going to add, just like we have been doing, I3 minus I1. Because this time, I3 is going this way in this loop. I1 is going this way. So we're going to subtract 
I1, because the current going through here is I3 minus that current. Multiply by 1 ohm. So let's see what we have. We want here, there, here, here, and then we're going to go right here, plus I3, because I3 is going this way, minus, which is going that way, they're going opposite, so you subtract I2 times 2 ohms equals 0, because we've come full loop around. We've come back to the 40 volt source. That's right over there, so we don't have to add it again. We have three equations. Now we can solve because we have three equations. One, two, three. Three variables, I1, I2, I3. We can solve. Now we can solve through matrix analysis. We can do substitution, all those different things. Those, I'm sure you know. And if you don't, you can check one of our other videos for easy ways to solve those. Now we're going to change it up again. We're going to do a super mesh. A super mesh, yes. Now, what is the difference between a regular mesh and a super mesh? Well, a super mesh will have a constant current source. Now, how will that change things? Very interesting. Very interesting. Once I get rid of all this stuff, we can change our original circuit, put a current source in there, and see how it changes. We're going to erase this right here. And we're going to put in a current source there. So right here, it's a constant current source. It's going to be, let's say, 1 amp. 1 amp, right over there. So now, let's just look at this for a second. We got this one going over here. If we try to go around this mesh, and we try to do mesh analysis right over here, we can't because this right here is 1 amp. This right over here would be 1 amp. You can't, there's no voltage. You can't figure out the voltage here, so you can't do voltage in Kirchhoff's voltage law. But we do know something. Remember, there's only one current going through here, right? And we know it's 1 amp. So, what does that tell us about these? Because this one goes through here, this one goes through that way. Remember last time when we were doing regular mesh analysis and we would go right over here, we would do, if we were going this way and this way, we would do I2 minus I3 times the 2 ohms. Well, the same applies in this situation. We got I1 going in this side. So if we were to think about this, this is like, this is almost like the, this is going in the same direction as I3, this right here. So we're going to do I3 minus I1. So like I3 is going through this way, the same direction as this current source. I1 is going the opposite direction. And we know that there's a relationship between I1 and I3. And the answer to the relationship, the solution, is going to be 1 amp. That's this. I3 minus I1 equals 1 amp. It's got to. It just has to. There's no other way around it, you know? So once you understand that, it's kind of like, OK, but now what do I do? Because I can't, I can't do a loop in this one. I can't do a loop in that one anymore. I have to make a giant loop is what you got to do. So what we're going to continue to do is we're going to make a giant loop. And this, my friends, is what the super mesh is. Once we make this relation right over here, we write that down, we can make a super mesh right over here. And we can call that super mesh I1, I3, or something like that. But it's just going to be another equation. So first, let's do this one. Let's do this mesh, because this mesh is just like any other. We're going to do I2, just like we did last time, I2 times 6 plus and we still label this I3 because there's still I3 going through this part, right? And there's still I1 going through this part. We just don't, we just know that I3 minus I1 is 1 amp right over here. And we can even write that. We can do, this is 
i3 minus i1. And that's right here. So we're going to continue going around this loop. We're going to do i2, i2 minus i3 times that 2 ohms plus continue around going to the 3 ohm. We're going to do i2 minus i1 times 3 ohms equals to 0 because we've gone all the way around. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with this but with this super mesh. So we're going to start over here at the 40. We remember that it's plus 40 because we're going in the positive side. And then we're going to go to this way. We got plus 4 ohms times I3. And then we're going to continue this way. We're going to ignore this because we've already found a relationship. We're going to make a giant loop. We're going to go over here. We have plus 5 ohms times I1. And now we're going to go to this source voltage, minus 20 volts. And then we're going to go over here, plus I1 minus I2 times 3 ohms, plus I3 minus, continuing this way around the mesh, we got I3 minus I2 times 2 ohms. And now we come back to where we started at the 40 volt. So we just equal to 0 because we've gone all the way around the loop. And Kirchhoff's voltage law applies to any loop. That's the thing. So if I was to make a circuit and make a loop, the same circuit, if I was to go around this way, any closed loop of wire, Kirchhoff's voltage law applies. So all the way around in this little one, in this little one, all the way in these two, it always applies. Any all the voltages across any loop equal to zero. So that's how this works. We're going to simplify these, though. We're going to make this one. This one doesn't need to be simplified. This one right over here. What is it? It's 6i2 plus 2i2 minus 2i3 plus 3i2 minus 3i1 equals zero. This one right here, um, we got this right here. We got 40 minus 20 equals 20 plus 4i3 plus 5i1 plus 3i1. And what I'm doing is just multiplying these resistances out to the um, expressions for the currents that we're subtracting. So right over here, we've got 3 times I1, which is right there. 3 times negative I2 minus 3I2 plus 2 times I3, so 2 times I3 minus 2I1. Or no, that's I2. Oops. Equals 0. OK, so we got this one. This one, and this one. These are our three equations, and our three variables are I1, I2, and I3. Now, we can continue to just simplify these. I'm going to rewrite them right over here. We have I3 minus I1 equals 1 amp. We have 6I2. I'm just going to check these off. Okay, so we have negative 3i1 plus 3, 5, 11i2 plus 11i2. Okay, minus, minus 2i3. And that's just coming from here, and we're just combining terms and making this easy. You can fast forward this if you know how to do this. I'm sure you do. Equals to 0. So we have this. That's combined terms. We have equation 1, equation 2, and now we need 3. 3 
right over here. Well, we have this 20 right over here. This is a constant, so we can just move that over to this side. We're not going to do that yet. We're going to try to focus on the terms. How about I1? We got 5 I1. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 I1. Cross those out. We got negative 5 I2 plus, mm, I guess we do plus negative, but not while I'm here. So we're going to do minus 5 I2. And now we got 4, 5, 6 I3. And now remember we have this constant. We're going to just move that over to the other side. And then we'll get negative 20. So now we have three equations in more condensed form. Now, you could substitute, you could eliminate, you could do all these things, and it would make it, I mean, you'll get the right answer, but there's a simpler way to do it. So next week we're going to be doing another video, and it's going to explain how you would solve this equation. Once you have these equations and you know how to do it, through algebra or anything like that, you're set. But there's a faster way if you have a graphing calculator. And on an exam, you have to do it pretty fast. It'll take 30 seconds tops if you can type it in fast enough. So hope you learned something here. You learned something about uber meshes or super meshes and mesh analysis.